am the Mark Skelton, the one and only, and uh, I have the most awesome job in the entire planet. I get to make characters for a living. Who could ask for anything better? We always start with a concept. Um, usually our concepts have been coming from um, Ma uh, Rob McKinnon, who fantastic character artist, character designer, um, 2D stuff. So usually we get like a front and a back, and that's usually um, reviewed by Chris Roberts and Chris Olivia, and they usually come to an agreement as far as how um, the character should look. As you know, again, they work out a lot of details at that point. Um, once they're happy with it, um, it, it comes to me, and usually what I do is I'll take um, a basic character into ZBrush, which is a um, sculpting program. Um, and just kind of block out like the general structure of it in 3D. At that point, usually I'll take the block out um, and run it by um, Brian Brewer. And um, also Kyle has been helping us too with setup. So just to kind of get their eyes on it, make sure that everything works that how they would expect it, you know. And we, we go through things like, you know, how does armor fold in you know, how does it stretch when he stands up? How does it, you know, when he when he twists his spine, like does it penetrate anywhere? Is there any problems that you see come up, you know? And also what type of material it is too, you know, like obviously rubber and um, cloth are much easier to twist and, and deal with than metal. Uh, metal, you have to make sure that um, it's level lord, you know, kind of like um, like a armadillo, you know, make sure that it folds in on itself if it's got a lot of articulation. So at that point, after all that is um, worked out and all the um, the block out looks good, it looks uh, the silhouette is nice, the weighting is nice. Then what I usually do from there is I start on the high res version. Now the high res version. Um, what I do is I do a technique called uh, retopologizing, which I'll take the um, block out mesh that I've done and I will bring it into 3D Studio Max and then snap uh, polygons to the surface of it and basically make a whole new mesh that is cleaner um, on top of the block out mesh. Now what that gives me is, is better flow lines. Um, when we deform the character, um, it's much more um, flexible and easy for Brian to use. Then after I've done that, I take it into ZBrush and do the final high res sculpt on it. Um, final high res sculpt is um, super detail oriented. Um, you know, at that point, I've got a lot of the small details in, but they're not 100%. Um, so, clean it up in ZBrush, do like the small, like nuts and bolts type stuff, the super small scratches, things of that nature. Then I'll take it back out, go back into uh, 3D Studio Max, and then do what's called a bake. And what that does is I transfer the details from the high-res model to the low-res model that you're gonna that you see in the game um, so that uses um, normal maps which normal maps are a type of map that is um, X it's basically XYZ so you have um, it, it gives you a more complete representation of the higher res stuff uh, but it's 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 a it's a flat map so it gives you 3d information like on a flat map which gives the illusion that it's um, it's more detailed than it is but the high res is detailed but anything smaller than about an inch or so you know on the on the character is usually normal mapped because there's really no reason to to actually build that in so once we got all that, once we got the normal map and everything baked down, um, usually at that point I'll hand it off to Brian and then uh, Brian and Kyle will start to rig it and make sure that it works and if there's anything 
you know, from there on out that is a problem, they'll bounce it back to me and I'll adjust it. Let's see, from there I go to texturing. So I'll start texturing the model um, while they're doing that. Um, I'd put UVs on it so it's got texture maps uh, and everything in place. I just have to um, bring them up to detail, make sure they're high res, make sure that you know it represents what it's supposed to be. Metal looks like metal, leather looks like leather, so on and so forth. Um, at that point, uh, after I've got it all textured and it's all working, I put it in the engine and start tweaking from there. Um, now the engine tweaks, uh, I'll start dialing in the specularity, which uh, the specularity is the, you know, like the glossiness, how light affects the metals or the leather or, you know, again, it reinforces the look of the material that I'm going for. Um, luckily the Cry Engine has a ton of really uh, fantastic um, material settings that uh, have come in like super handy. I mean, it's it's one of the best engines I've worked with for sure. As far as it's uh, just the amount of stuff um, that you can do with it is a, is pretty amazing on a material level. After I've dialed it all in, um, Brian is usually finishing up the rig at that point, and then uh, we've got a finished model. And uh, there's so, usually some tweaks involved. You know, if I'm uh, if I'm in the engine and running him around and I see something stretching or I see something pulling or you know out of, or penetrating, then I'll go back in and do some tweaks to fix it. But um, usually at that point, man, it's pretty, it's pretty good to go. So the most challenging thing I think going forward um, is probably making sure that the characters fit um, style, like style-wise and proportion-wise. Ergonomics is huge. It's very important. Um, obviously, when we design characters, uh, we have to think about the spaceship interiors uh, when we're doing it. It obviously has to fit within um, the structure and the ergonomics of, of, of what they're using. So, um, and that's a huge challenge because the suits are so vastly different. I mean, once we move forward, um, you have all ranges of stuff, you know, stuff from like uh, big bulky solid metal suits, you know, down to like almost like pirate outfits, you know, with the privateer stuff. So all that stuff has to work in conjunction with whatever ship that they're, they're using at the time. So that's a huge deal, it definitely is. The other big hurdle is the accessories for all the characters. I mean, you think about it, there's gonna be hundreds of trinkets and, you know, different things that they can put on and swap out, you know, and uh, there's also gonna be things like if you blow off your arm, there's gonna be like, you, you, there's gonna be a mechanical arm in its place um, that you choose from. So all that stuff has to work together um, on every model to make sure that um, it doesn't break. So it's uh, it's daunting, but I think we can do it. I have a good feeling about it. It's it's been definitely one of the coolest uh, games I've ever worked on. That's for sure.